Hey everybody, Lindsay here, and on today's video we are going to be reading even more one-star IMDb reviews of the most beloved films of all time. Without further ado, let's get started. Up first, we have an action and adventure classic. And it is the first film of one of the most successful trilogies of all time, and yes, I'm using the word trilogy on purpose. Yes, I am talking about 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark, starring Harrison Ford. It's currently sitting at an 8.4 out of 10 stars on IMDb. So let's scroll to the user reviews and see what they have to say. Filter down to the one rating. Oh, there's the few. And it looks like a couple people um, didn't quite understand the rating system and put one as being the best instead of 10. So there are a couple one star user reviews on here that are overwhelmingly positive. But let's uh, scroll through the people who followed directions. <laughs> All right, here's the first one. One out of 10, dated, Awful, especially the action scenes. Really? Okay, let's see what this guy has to say. Ever since I became a movie fan, my taste for dazzling action has been cultivated by movies from the late 1990s up to the present, such as the Matrix trilogy, Spider-Man, X-Men, Blade, and the awesome Underworld franchise. Okay. Having been used to these movies, my standard is high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if something looks fake, I will think of what Sir Ridley Scott said about fake scenes. I don't fucking believe it. <laughs> Today, I finally finished watching the so-called classic, the first installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. It almost put me to sleep. Twice. The story is slow paced. But the problem is the movie never picks up the pace. It drags on and on. The opening scene in the cave with the spiders was interesting. And that's it. Gradually, I began sleepwatching. The movie never engages. There was never a moment when the protagonist was in grave danger. Yeah, he got trapped in a tomb, whatever. When I woke up, I was not surprised to see that he had managed to get himself out. The movie was that predictable. Do not think that I cannot appreciate old movies. I like the 1979 timeless classic Alien. That movie does not look dated at all, even seen today due to the way it was shot. Raiders of the Lost Ark is god awful. It looks dated. So is Star Wars 1977. Damn, dude. Oh, and his username is Underworld Rocks. This guy really likes Underworld movies. If it each to his own. All right, this next one is titled Overpromoted. I had to watch this film because of a film arts class that I'm in. I've heard so much about this movie and I expected it to be fantastic. People said things like, sets a new bar, will keep you on the edge of your seat, and even best film ever made. I don't know about that, but it's pretty good. I was genuinely disappointed after watching this film. It was just a bunch of mindless explosions and chase scenes. Isn't that the best part of an action-adventure movie? <laughs> However, I understand that a great deal of people do in fact enjoy watching this kind of film and that I should have expected this kind of letdown from an action film. Although on the same note, I expected it to have more substance. I probably would have appreciated it more if it had been maybe, oh, I don't know, a real plot or story of some kind. The insignificant storyline it did have was so hard to follow anyways because of all the explosions, crashing and fighting. It could have been so much better. Yes, Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's just so hard to follow. Up next, we have another first installment of a very successful and beloved trilogy. Yes, I am talking about 1985's Back to the Future. 
You're gonna see some serious shit. It's currently sitting at an 8.5 out of 10 stars on IMDb. Scroll to the user reviews and let's see what we got. Okay, this is this is straight to the point. Just says total rubbish of a trilogy. So he's not a, this person isn't even dogging the fir the first film. He's dogging the entire trilogy. <laughs> it says very bad. Makes no sense. Bad acting. Everyone misbehaving. Very strange. And this was posted just <laughs> this was posted on August thirtieth, twenty twenty. Overrated, horrible. The massacre of cinema. If you want some true sci-fi, just watch Star Trek, Stargate, Battlestar Galactica, or Star Wars. So this guy's kind of miffed that it's uh, got a, um, a heading of science fiction under the title. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? This one's titled Not So Good. I can see why certain people would like this movie, but I've been watching it myself for several years now. I've been watching this movie for several years, Jesus. <laughs> and it's just not for me. I think it's cheesy and just not funny. Apart from the creepy scenes with the young mom hitting on her future son, <laughs> there's a huge plot hole I've noticed for many years. Why wouldn't his adult parents remember that their son looks identical to the kid from both their pasts? It's a dumb movie made for a certain group of people. Oh, you just called all of us that like this movie dumb. Ooh. We'll do one more with this one. <laughs> Cause this one looks really funny. Why was Doc, an old man, best friends with a teenager? Suspicious. And it says, I find the relationship between Doc and his teen best friend to be highly unnerving. What were Doc's real motivations for befriending Marty? Why is the Doc really ringing Marty at 2 o'clock in the morning? Is he getting a kick out of ringing up a young man at this hour? Highly unnerving film. So he's kind of calling Doc Brown a pedophile. <laughs> Do you know what this means? It means that this damn thing doesn't work at all. Up next, we are going to look at a beloved children and family classic. I grew up watching this movie as a lot of people did my age. Yes, I am talking about 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory starring Gene Wilder. It's currently sitting at a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Let's see what the dissenters have to say about this one. All right. <laughs> this first one says, not exactly the charming film it's purported to be. And it says, Willy Wonka, as played by Gene Wilder, is the grown-up stranger all parents warn their kids not to talk to. He's smarmy, he's a little too friendly, he's horribly frightening, and to my utter astonishment, he turns out to be deadly. If I were 10 years old and I encountered Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka, I would run screaming from his presence as fast as my terrified little legs would carry me. I certainly wouldn't accept an invitation to visit his hellish chocolate factory where small children are slurped to their demise in giant vats of confection. This is supposed to be a children's film? It belongs on a double feature bill with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What a perverted, hateful movie, and what a dirty trick to play on innocent children. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. A little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest man. All right, this one is titled A Horrific and Nauseating Piece of Moldy Candy. This lame and terrible adaptation of the first book I read as a child should be burned and forgotten. So many pointless changes were made, terrible songs were added, and the magic was drained from the original prose. Even as a very small child, I did not understand why they gave the movie a different title. Then I realized it was because it had nothing to do with the book. Very little of Roald Dahl's story is here. Instead, we are flooded with cheap sets, chocolate that looks like dirty water. I, I kind of agree with that one. 
Bad acting and some of the worst songs ever. I've seen several trailers for the new adaptation and I'm hyped to see the great glass elevator fly at last. The, the last scene of the movie, they're flying in the elevator. What are you talking about? Here it comes. Pass on this one, go with Tim Burton's film. Ooh. Or if you have any problems, dial information. Thank you for calling. This one's titled, and they say the new movie is dark. This is undoubtedly the worst movie ever made. Every second I was watching it, my eyes were being burned out. First of all, I thought that the book was okay. It had its charm, but wasn't a great American classic. This movie is not the book. They took the same general concept and then put their own bad spin on everything. I don't mind if they changed some things like squirrels to geese because they didn't have the technology to do squirrels, but changing the song lyrics and adding their own songs, that was bad. <laughs> the Oompa Loompas were all wrong. How anyone could even come up with the idea of making their skin orange and hair green is anyone's guess. I think it's because they had uh, different little people from different countries and they wanted to make them all look the same. I think that was the thinking behind that, but that's just a guess. I don't like the look of it. I could have done without the demonic chanting when they're on the boat. Have you even read the lyrics? Yeah, it's a creepy scene. Most people agree with you on that one. This is scary. Is Wonka trying to kill these kids? <laughs> Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. And they say that the new movie is dark. At least Wonka warns them, and not in the weird way Wilder did. Sure, he has not been around people in a while, and he obviously cares more about his candy than the kids, but he should still care a little. Do yourself a favor and never see this horrid movie. Wow. I won't talk to you ever again! You're a rotten, mean father! You never give me anything I want! <laughs> this one's titled, Rotten Piece of Junk. It says, this was a very cheesy film. I don't mean the food for all you cheese lovers, lol. Anyway, this was terrible. It had old graphics. It didn't even have the title of the book. The actors were insane. I would rather watch Dumbo. Okay. Charlie looked like a girl for Pete's sake. What? All right. I recommend the new and improved version directed by Tim Burton and composed by Danny Elfman. Johnny Depp was great and much better than Gene Wilder. You shut your mouth right there. <laughs> Don't speak. For some moments in life, there are no words. <laughs> Freddie Highmore also did a better job, in my opinion, than the other actor who played Charlie in the 1971 version. The Oompa Loompas were much better in this film. I feel they had more of a purpose in the new film. Deep Roy did a great job playing the Oompa Loompas. Definitely go around the 2005 film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory instead of this 1971 movie. <laughs> he really did not like the original. Oh God. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. As I'm reading these, it's a lot of people that um, are really big fans of the Tim Burton version and they came here to trash the original. I'm assuming it's in retaliation for a lot of people saying that Tim Burton's version sucked. <laughs> Time is a precious thing, never wasted. This one's titled, Don't Watch This! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Although many people found this movie great, well, I didn't, and so will you. First of all, if you read the book, you'll probably come upon this movie and feel desperate to watch it. But don't! It's a waste of time. The props are junky, the acting, oh my god, it's not even funny. It's even worse than you imagine it will be. I also hate the characters, and Willy Wonka is bad. This movie doesn't even have sounds or special effects. Well, it was 1971, so... And the music? Yuck. But come on, give these guys a break. It's in the 70s, like I just said. Here's a tip if you read the book and are dying to see the movie. Turn to Charlie in the Chocolate Factory starring Johnny Depp. This movie is funnier and so darn cool. The actors are okay and I would recommend this movie for Ronald Dahl. Readers hope this comment was useful. It was useful for this video. <laughs> Should never, never doubt what nobody is sure about. Oh wow, this one's a little interesting. <laughs> I hate this movie. 
I remember watching this as a kid in the fifth grade and remembering how jacked up it is. I mean, think about it. A bunch of scary, singing and dancing little people, weird, annoying kids, and a pedophile candy maker. <laughs> it's bizarre and weird to think of this as a kid's movie and not a snuff film for Kevin Spacey. Damn. <laughs> Don't watch this movie. It's horrible. Aww. You lose! Good day, sir! Man, people got such hate for Willy Wonka. I said good day! All right, we are going to do one more. And this film has been considered a classic for like 80 years now. Yes, I'm talking about 1939's The Wizard of Oz, starring Miss Judy Garland. How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Oh. It is sitting at eight out of 10 stars on IMDb. So let's see what the haters gotta say about this. <laughs> this one's called Wiz of Oz. I guess they're referring to P. And it says, this is just one of those old movies that are low budget. They spent a lot of money on this movie for the time that it was produced, just so you know. It has a nice story, but there's no eye catchers or cliffhangers. Nothing interesting. It's like, what the heck am I watching? It's so slow. Bad acting and cheesy. Come on, get up and fight, you shivering junkyard. All right, this guy, wow, this one looks very passionate. So we'll read this one. An overrated piece of cinematic rubbish. And it says, I can't stand this film. It's gross. It got creepy monkeys flying and little people in ridiculous costumes. It's very disturbing to watch. I don't get it. A much superior film was made starring the adorable Shirley Temple. Check it out if you get the chance. It's called The Bluebird. Steer clear of this one, it'll give you nightmares. Plus the color is god awful. I mean it. It's like the first time I went to Putnam Pantries in Boston as a teen. I had to add everything on my Sunday: Strawberry syrup, chocolate syrup, sprinkles, chocolate pieces, caramel, etc, etc. Hey, it was free, okay? Well, this movie is like that. All that color will make you nauseous. You'll need a hot bottle for the top of your head. The Bluebird has heart. It has soul. It has a cute grandpa-grandma couple. And oh yes, did I mention no Judy Garland to break our ears? Could she yodel like Shirley Temple? That would be no. <laughs> Steer clear from this nauseating, syrupy yuck fest that the masses gobble up. You're a person of distinction. You got class. You got taste. So leave the masses to their cheapo musical nonsense and their it's a wonderful life type rubbish and choose to watch the movie that makes you awesome. The Bluebird. <laughs> this guy really likes The Bluebird with Shirley Temple. I might have to check it out upon his recommendation. Me, she bit you? No, her dog. Oh, she bit her dog, eh? All right, this just says this movie sucked. <laughs> this movie sucked. It is so rubbish, not even your pets will be interested. If you want to see what the inside of a baby's mind looks like, here is the film for you. My first problem is that the people who made it didn't know if they wanted it in color or black and white, so they used both. LOL. As if we wouldn't notice. Well, I noticed and I thought it was rubbish. I'm not even gonna explain that one. I think we all know what we're all thinking after reading that. <laughs> the little town with all those children was actually played by grown men. Yeah, they were little people. It's stupid to think we'll believe their children. They're not, they're not supposed to be children. We wish to welcome you to much kid land. Another thing I hated was that it's telling a story about four people and three of them aren't even real. One is a bear. <sighs> no, it's a lion. His name's Cowardly Lion. She calls him Lion. <laughs> one is a scarecrow and one is a robot. He's not a robot, he's a tin man. 
Now that's getting personal, Lion. Yes, get up and teach him a lesson. All they do is jump around and sing weird songs at each other like morons. Not even a baby would enjoy this, so please don't try making one watch it, no matter who it belongs to. Yes, don't take other people's babies and make them watch Wizard of Oz. That's what this guy's saying. Uncle Henry, you won't let her, will you? This one, <laughs> this one's titled Stop Being Sick on My Face. <laughs> I watched this back in the day when I was single digits and it went in one ear and out the other. I couldn't remember anything about it except the tornado sequence. I watched it again in my 20s and 30s, mainly at Christmas as you're forced to at this time. Still, I couldn't understand all the fuss. Now, nearly 50 years old, I can categorically state this film is awful. Yes, it is like a dream, a forgettable one and as a fantasy more like a bad acid trip. There's nothing heartwarming about it. Those that find that must be psychopathic. The acting is flat, including the famous Judy Garland, and the more she and the other stars overact, the flatter it becomes. None of the characters are likable or interesting, and the whole experience is like someone being sick on your face. The fairy from the north is more ugly and disgusting than the wicked witch of the east, and the dog Toto outacts them all. <laughs> the only good part was when the tree slapped Dorothy for pinching an apple. That was the only cool thing in it, and that only probably because you want to slap her yourself for being such a precocious non-starter. He did not like Judy Garland. Ouch! Wow, there's some hate out there for The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, what a world, what a world! Well, that was fun. If there are any beloved movies that you don't like, please put it below in the comments. I would love to hear about it. We'll be doing more of these because there's a lot of beloved films out there and there's a lot of people that just can't fucking stand them. <laughs> well, that's gonna do it for this video. So until next time, this is Lindsay signing off. I'll check you later.